Um, thank you, um, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, I'm going to try to sort of raise the bar of this debate. At times, it's been remarkably undignified in here this afternoon. Yeah. Um, I, I think that, um, and I am the only practicing doctor, independently practicing doctor in the House, and I thank the Prime Minister for pointing that out earlier um, at the dispatch box. And so, I guess, as somebody who has a publicly declared role outside of this chamber, um, my contribution um, should have some value. Um, the House should know that when I was selected as a candidate in Bracknell, it was at an open meeting at which anybody on the electoral register could attend. At the said uh, open meeting, I declared I would continue working as a doctor. Um, I subsequently was elected, um, and the whole electorate knew this. Um, so I don't feel like I'm doing anything that my electorate haven't supported me in doing. Um, but during that election campaign, I, I made a bit of a mistake. Um, I'm on record as saying that I, I thought that members of parliament should get paid significantly more. Um, I said it in, in, in good faith, actually, because I, I thought that this chamber, this mother of all parliaments, the parliament that should lead in this world, not copy other parliaments, by the way, um, should have the very best people. And it's a statement of fact that the best people tend to get paid a bit more in terms of their, you know, the, what they've done in life, whether they've been successful or not. Part of it, at least part of it, is to do with how much they're paid. But I have made a mistake, actually, and I think after four and a half years, um, I'm prepared to accept that in my time here, working on select committees, contributing here in this chamber, um, some of the very best contributions on both sides of the House have been made by people who continue to have things uh, do things outside of this house. I think this chamber, some of the best contributions in the most sort of difficult debates come from people who are actually working in the field. And a lot of the contributions, I fear, are pretty substandard because invariably they're scripted by other people, be it the Whip's office or indeed outside lobbying groups. The best contributions are the, from people who actually truly know. And so I, I, I fear that although I can understand the the, the, you know, the desire on the part of the opposition to try to improve the reputation of this chamber, I don't think this is how you go about doing it. Um, because actually the, the fundamental problem, the fundamental challenge that we all face in here is a complete breakdown in trust. In fact, the rise of UKIP is to do with this sense of anti-establishment, anti-politics, this sense that the, the, the bigger parties just aren't listening anymore and are populated by people who are in it for themselves. Now, how do you address that trust? And I reflect back to last week, um, when I, I did about 40 hours. Um, it will be declared accordingly. Um, and I worked as a doctor, and I was working in my constituency, and my, my patients were coming in, and they were recognising who I was. And it was quite interesting to look in their face, because they immediately, because they knew I was a politician, they didn't want to trust me. And then they realised I was actually their doctor. <laughs> and so they were a bit conflicted. I then proceeded to treat them and prescribe or whatever, and then they left. And I reflected upon the fact, I said, well, why is it that I'm the same human being, I have the same values and principles when I'm a doctor as, I, as when I'm a, 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 a politician, and yet I'm not trusted? I think, I think it's because my profession, the medical profession, has always valued um, knowledge professional behaviour, honour, integrity, General Medical Council, go and read. And the public, the patients, trust us, because most of the time, not every time, but most of the time, um, we are trying to do the best for them. Now, how come it isn't the case for politicians? And how do we address that? Uh, sure. Is it not also the case that, as a result of this, it makes my honourable friend probably the most qualified person to speak in this House about the National Health Service? It, it, yes, I mean, I, 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 I would agree, and in particular, in particular with regards to... And the best liberal. Um, that's for other, I'm not sure about that. Um, in particular with regards to the regional health care settlement, of which I've had a lot to say in, ter in the Thames Valley, um, the fact that I retain, that I have up-to-date understanding of what is happening in the local healthcare economy makes me a more effective representative yeah, yeah. for my constituents. And, and there's the one thing, just, just as an aside, 
No one's talked about hours. I can tell you as a junior doctor, I've done 100 hours weeks. I mean, it's, it's pretty harsh when that happens. Um, so I know what working hard is. Um, I think for most people, 40 hours a week is what they call their full-time job. I suspect, I suspect most people in this house do more than that on politics. And I know that my family and friends think I've aged quite markedly in the last four and a half years whilst doing this role. And at no time, the fact that I've done additional work in, in medical practice, has that impacted at all on my ability to be a politician. In fact, I think it has improved it. And the reason that I think trust matters, matters for all parties, whoever's in charge, is because it's only with trust that we get to govern effectively. Um, and I look at the challenge that we're facing, and I see ageing, I see Britain's role in the world diminishing because we don't know what it should be. And I think to myself, this country needs good government of whatever political persuasion that is trusted, of course. I, he's making a very powerful point about the range of experience we need. Isn't the pernicious thing about this motion the fact that it singles out one particular area, which is business experience, which is automatically barred? Yes, I mean, I think I... I, I to go back to my, the Honourable Member is right, to go back to my original um, comment, the, the clock hasn't been changed. Um, going back to my original, to go back to my original comment about pay, the reason I have changed, the re, the, what am I to do here? <laughs> you keep going. I, I think if you have another minute, that will be fair. Um, to go back to my original point about salary, the reason I've changed my mind is because business, the law, trade union experience, I think it is all valuable, actually, in this, in this uh, chamber. And I think, actually, if people are working in those areas, I think they should be paid as well. Um, so I suppose in closing, my, my, my central thrust is, is that we face massive challenges as a country, massive challenges as a country. <laughs> Um, and we don't talk about them very often in here. There aren't many debates about access to energy, access to food, um, ageing, extremism and the like. We, when we come to deal with those problems properly, we're going to need to be trusted as individuals, otherwise the, 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 the public are not going to follow us. And I don't think this motion at all addresses that problem. Each one of us has a responsibility to behave honourably and with integrity in all that we do. I always have done since I came to this House and will continue to do so, irrespective of the regulations that are passed either now or in the future.